Right, so here we go. So converting a Webflow built product page over to WordPress using your Desly 3.0. Now this particular tutorial, I'm gonna take a little bit of a different approach to the previous ones, whereby I'm gonna try and really compress them down. Anyway, enough of me chit-chatting. So what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna create those product pages, or begin to it at least anyway. So the first thing we need to do is activate the e-commerce functionality on Webflow. And you do that just by hitting that little cart and just saying, let's do this, yeah. Cool, so once we're there, we need to add some products. So we need to do is say, add five products. Okay, so now once we have that, we are going to go into the product page. So we'll just close that down, go over to products, not projects. This is now the fourth time I've made that mistake. So products, okay, we're here. So now, if you're following any of these tutorials that I've been doing, I leverage Flowbase quite a bit just to kind of speed things up because quite frankly, having to redesign and design every single time I do a tutorial is just crazy. So I use Flowbase just to kind of get through the nuts and bolts so I can show you how to link it all up. Now Flowbase doesn't do a product page component type of thing. So we're just gonna grab uh, content components, pop it in there and we're gonna customize it. And that's one of the strengths that you Desly and this Webflow thing brings to the table is that you can fully customize it. You're not locked into stone. You can make it look however you want. So we'll use our creativity hats on with that. Right, so over to Flowbase. Um, this particular one, I think is kind of closely matches what a product page-ish would use if you use a sprinkle of imagination. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy that, head on over to Webflow, hit click on the body and paste it and the design's there. So now what we've got here is we've got a product image, not really, but we're gonna pretend. Product image, this will be our product name, our product description. We've got a couple of statistical items that would be quite nice to have with this with a specific product. And then we've got a secondary image. So yeah, a lot of these items will automatically connect to the CMS. So we've got like things like our content name. So we'll just grab that and we'll just get the product name from there. And then this will be product description. And this one would be our main image so if we go into here we say get image from products and select main image um, and then we can just add a little bit of css just to kind of make it work fine all right so now for the other items we need to actually create custom fields so in order to do that it's relatively straightforward and the great thing that the udesly app does is it will create all your advanced custom fields, otherwise known as ACF, within Webflow via this particular process. So it means you don't have to go and manually configure anything on your end when you get into WordPress. So all we need to do is click on the cart, go to products, hit that little cog, scroll down and go to custom fields. So one thing you'll notice is this kind of 30s field limit. Now, this isn't necessarily an issue for most, most particular builds, but at some point you're gonna have a website that it's got a well, product that's got quite a number of fields. So say for instance, lots of images and product features or whatever it is like that. So that, that hard limit can become a bit frustrating. There is a way around it. So there is some hope, but it's beyond the scope of this particular tutorial, but I will be doing that um, tutorial next and it will be Shopify and a WordPress one coming, which will show you how to, how to do those. So, so if you haven't already subscribed and they'll be coming. Fine, so the first thing we are gonna be doing is hitting uh, add field. And now I'm just gonna wind through this quite quickly. So basically we're just gonna create a series of text items, an image and a color one. Uh, you can pretty much call them whatever you want. You can have spaces, no spaces, it does it for you. So the first one we're just gonna call it um, product stat uh, one. I'm just gonna copy that, it's a short single line and we will just create this three times. And the last one. Fine, now we need the little product stat titles. So we'll do the same thing. We'll just call this title. Copy that. Okay, we'll just give those a little order. So we'll put them in the right spot. So that one goes there, that one goes there, and that one goes there. Cool, now image. So we want a secondary image, so we'll call it secondary image, cryptic. 
Fine. And then the final one was the color. So we'll just go here. We'll call it product UI color with a U for you Americans. Hate me if you will. Cool. Um, fine. And once that's done, we just need to hit save. And now we're going to do is just going to add a few. Uh, we're just going to fill out some of those CMS fields so when we actually design this thing, we can actually see what we what we're doing and when we have linking it looks in there. From there. Now the cool thing about when you do images this way, if you create a custom field and you're embedding it or you're linking any of the CMS fields into a product page, is it'll actually create the source set. And if you don't know what a source set is, basically when you um, have build a web page and you build a for, for a desktop and you use, say, for instance, a 2,500 pixel wide image, you don't need that same image width or image dimensions for a mobile device if it's on a little portrait, because quite frankly, the, the size is not required. So what the source set does is it and uses the server to scale down the images. So if you use this particular way and you use it through the dynamic CMS things, it will automatically apply those source sets and it'll keep your scores nice and speedy. Fine. All right, last thing we need to do is just add our UI color. So I'm just going to check to something at random. That looks all right. And hit save. OK, so we're now we're saved. So now we just need to do is go and link up those little fields. So back to our product page. Uh, you guessed it, this one becomes our image. So get image from our secondary image. Uh, we don't have anything displayed, so we'll just choose our great shoes. There it is. And we will just do a little bit of styling on that. So we'll say maximum width of 250. That looks better. I just want to quickly change this image out just so it makes a bit more sense with the whole shoes example. Okay, and there we have our great shoes page. And you can see it, certain things are coming through, but now we want to just make that the right color. So we should go into here, get background color, select it, and voila. Cool, so that's all that. Now we just need to connect up these last little bits. Uh, we go into here, we'll get text. This will be stat item one. And then just our titles. Okay, looking pretty good. Now we just need to add the, the kind of the, one of the most important features, the add to cart button. So what we need to do is just go here, we find our add to cart. Uh, there it is, and just drag and drop that into our container. Okay, so now we just need to style it up a little bit. I'm just gonna speed past this bit, but uh, yeah, wanna follow it, slow it down if you wanna slow it down. Okay, the next thing you wanna do is basically tweak up your option list. Now, at the moment it's displaying as a, as a drop-down select, but it comes across as a button. So just change your UI. Uh, and there you have it. So now you can go through and you can customize those as, as well. So we're not going to at the moment, we'll just leave them the way they are. Uh, so the last thing we need to do is add in our pricing and our compare price. So what we will do is we'll just go up here and we'll add in a div. And a couple of text blocks. Okay, so now we just need to link it up. So this one is the price. So you guessed it, it goes to the price. And this one is our compare price. So get text. And Bob's your uncle, so it's just a bit of a decoration. So now all those elements will come across nice and neatly when we do convert it. So the only thing we need to do now is 
basically hit the convert button. So what we do is we just go here, click, oops, try again later. So if that happens, just publish the site, and it'll allow it to sync. And then once you've finished publishing, we just go hit the convert to WordPress button. It will automatically refresh. That basically solves a problem that some people may have when they weren't getting the custom binding applied. Um, once we have that, now we can download our code. Yippee. Okay, hit download. And then we head on over to our Udesley conversion. So just drag and drop that file into there. We'll pick up our conversion, the config file. And then the, th the screenshot, which just needs to be a PNG. Uh, and if you have any guesses there, it tells you how, what the dimensions need to be and all that type of stuff. Fine. So hit convert. And then download. Final step is we head on over to the your WordPress installation. I have all my stuff built on Cloudways. I just like them. They're really fast and it's good. Links below if you want them. Um, and now all we need to do is just go to our appearance section click on the theme and install it as you would any other theme. So let's do that quickly. So appearance themes, add new, uh, we'll upload a theme, choose a file, uh, choose our thing and hit install. Okay, so what's happening now while this is installing is it's installing advanced custom fields and it's installing the Udesli application. What it will then do once we hit activate is it will load in all the posts and custom details and build your website for you so you don't have to sit back and do anything uh, except for just enjoy yourself. Depending on your service spec speed, this can take some time. And so when we go here and we hit activate, you will notice that nothing is happening for me because I've done this tutorial now a few times. And so I'll have to use this force data import to get the stuff to come across. So if you don't see anything happening, you don't see this coming up from below, then you've either done a tutorial five or six times, or there's something a little bit hinky going on with your server and it's a bit slow. So you can always just use that to try and troubleshoot it. Once this hits green, you're good to go. So, ping, we are good to go. So now all we need to do is head on over to our products page and we can see the products that we created through that process in Webflow have been brought across. Now you don't have to create products in Webflow to then export them and go through this whole process once again. You've ostensibly created a theme. So everything that you create now within WordPress will work. Let's go into our great shoes example. Okay, so you can see that pretty much the product has been set up as we did in Webflow. It's all beautifully laid out and it's just really professionally done. The one caveat though that I need to, need to say, because we didn't spend much time in terms of configuring the very product variants, they're all a bit of a mess. So what we're gonna do is just remove those and we're just gonna add in a color variation quite quickly so we can see and test how that particular thing works. So I'll just remove these. Uh, remove the attributes. And we will add in a color attribute. Now we'll go black, green, and red. Uh, use for variations, save, head on back over to variations. Uh, then we can create variations for more attributes. Yes, yes. Cool, now we can just literally choose our image. So we will choose that one as our black one. Give it a price. Save changes. Now let's have a look at our particular product. So if we head on over with the Converse. This link here. We can see our product has come across Perfectly. So if we click on these, you'll see that the, the image has actually changed and update based on the product, which is just a nice, nice thing. Obviously, we want that to happen. And we can change and we've got complete control over everything that's on this particular page. So if we change this not bouncy, 
and we want to change this UI color to something else. We hit update and save, reload the page, and it's all there. So yeah, so that's basically it in a nutshell. If you found this tutorial useful, please like and subscribe below. Uh, there's affiliate links as well that really help me out. But more importantly, I will be releasing more and more tutorials as I go, and as the channel grows, I'll be able to invest more time. The next one that's going to be coming up is to do with meter details, which is a meter fields and kind of getting outside of those uh, restrictions that Webflow provides. So yeah, see you in the next one. Cheers.